I'm Johnny Messam, and my role in this is really, really easy. Um, six years ago, when we looked at a fantastic building, a 13th century barn here in Wiltshire, and we thought about the potential of what we could do in here to help support the arts, dance was right at the very centre. Uh, our first performance, bear in mind at that stage we had never done anything along these lines at all, was with Russell Maliphant. And it was a seismic event. And he took the whole building and he turned it in 90 degrees and presented an incredible uh, presentation here. And it set us on a path to think about how dance, alongside the other mediums that we represent, which are sculpture, painting, photography, really are moments to bind people together, people to come together. Four by 20 uh, was really a way to provide a metric that we could respond to because creativity really is about the response to limitations. It's not about the opportunity for anything to happen. It's about how you resolve problems. And that's really at the core of what we see as our sort of narrative. It's what I think a lot of artists will tell you as well, is actually what they're trying to do is solve problems. So in a way, we gave them a good problem, a maximum of four dancers, a maximum of 20 minutes, and a way we gave our audience a really interesting opportunity, which is to see how they responded to, if you like, a linear metric. And so that's where 4x20 um, really came from. I was brought on this project in order to share my knowledge within the dance scene, I would say that. So my job is making things happen, ensuring that the program is full of different activity, making sure that the right people are in right places at the right times and that everyone is satisfied. Um, this year's call out was for female identifying choreographers as we saw a disbalance within the dance industry that it's there are so many female artists and dancers. However, uh, we see male leaders much more often. And we just thought that, hey, we will create something for female identifying choreographers this time around. So this year we have selected three amazing choreographers, two of whom work as a collective. It's Adelie and Olivia. And then the other choreographer we have is Rosanna. This is Adélie Lavaille and I'm Olivia Grasso. We are the co-founder uh, of Our Mound Collective. Uh, we met at the Romba School of Ballet and Contemporary Dance in 2016 and after our graduation in 2019, uh, we decided to keep working together because we really enjoyed uh, of processes of creations and also performing together but we really found a, a good harmony in our creation process and we found the call out of um, Mesom's Gallery Wiltshire calling for emerging female artists and we were like this is the best opportunity for us to to present our work and to find a checkpoint to to start a new work which is called Plague of Doubt. We've had a really in amazing team. We had the music designer Eva Vaiti that really supported us in the creation. She will come tonight for the first time. She will see it live because we didn't have the chance to be in the studio together. So it was a lot of online conversation and exchange. Uh, we have obviously the amazing dancers that uh, supported us, uh, which is uh, Antoine Copy and Elena Puchol. Uh, both international dancers. One, uh, Antoine is from Belgium and Elena from Spain. So to see, even though like we're from different countries coming together and, and create something to present it tonight, uh, it's, it's very exciting. So for us, it was the opportunity to really like present uh, and to put further our work because with Olivia, even if we don't have like financial support or everything, we're always trying to find solution and always contact everyone. So we managed, but at some point we were like, okay, this could be like even more like a push up like to even more try to go further with what we want to create and to show with the audience. Hello, I'm Rosanna Anderson. I am one of the choreographers for 4 by 20 and I co-run a company called Impermanence with Josh Bentoven. And we're based in Bristol and have a venue called The Mount Without. 
and I'm from Australia and I grew up there and came over to the UK to study dance at the Rombert School of Ballet and Contemporary Dance. I heard about the call out for the 4x20 program and I loved how open it was. It was, you know, you really could just present the start of an idea and then there's this incredible package of support to uh, make a new work and show it in this incredible space. So um, it was really exciting to find out about it and then even more exciting to uh, get to be a part of it and see where, you know, see where things go with the journey of Massam's Wiltshire and what they're trying to do with dance. So for four years, we, we presented dance as part of our program and we knew that we wanted to do something a little bit different and to create a platform which helped uh, emerging talent. And so that's what we uh, had. That was the opportunity to then make an open call out uh, for the 4 by 20 program. So M1 Collective, who are just beautifully expressive, very body led. Um, and Rosanna, whose work is just unbelievable, and also I think you know, drawing in through theatre. And so it's a really interesting moment to look at how dance is kind of exploring these two strands with these, with these amazing minds. And that's, that's the journey we're following with them. So, yes, Utopia Room, um, it has this, this obviously the starting point of being cool, but like what's trendy, how to present, to show off, and to, to yeah, to show off really. And, and we started that piece at the Rumba School. When we extended the piece, it was the middle part that was already created. And we decided to do a pre and a after uh, this creation. So the piece is kind of divided in three parts, even though for us it's still like a continuity. And the first part has, uh, has more this like, we just need to show off and we have this, a bit like the magazines, woman presented like oh you need to be perfect and we're just natural even though there's so much effort behind that <laughs> and then the second part is more this more character and pointing out and being like look at me and more political show off and then the third part it's really being like actually pull off the mask and and just who are we behind all those costume we're putting, all the, the pretending who we are kind of things and just to find again kind of harmony together. We start on January in Germany so we create the, this new creation the Blake of Doubt. So on this one it's about doubt how how doubt can grow more fears about it, more how we can grow more like a little parasite inside yourself and how it can show you like different faces of it, like anxiety, paranoia, or all this kind of thing. And I think all of that could from like all the pressure we can have like surround us it could come from all the information because now we are living a bit in the world where the information you have it even less than once ago so you have so much information put like in front of you even not in front of you but like really like pushing you and at some point you don't know what you sh you should do and you have so many choices and you have to pressure to choose that it became like a bit like uh, loneliness and yeah you start at some point to be it about that so we play a lot around that in this piece it's always like a challenge because it's always hard to involve like media and everything. And in 20 minutes, it's a bit challenging for us. We really want to extend. So hopefully after this opportunity, we will keep going and create a proper piece where we can like really explore all the side of it. So I'm presenting two works at 4 by 20 The first one is Quote Quotable, which is a work based around Gertrude Stein. Uh, she was a poet and writer who lived in Paris in the early 20th century. 
and I have this solo cabaret piece that I performed to her poem about Picasso. It's called If I Told Him a Complete Portrait of Picasso. And I wanted to develop this work and extend it for the 4x20 platform. And I wanted to sort of really look at Paris at that time and that's too broad to just make a piece about Paris. So sort of went into where was a moment in time where lots of people came together. So I researched the opening night of the Rite of Spring and uh, Gertrude Stein was there, Picasso was there, Ravel was there, Debussy was there, many other people were there who were kind of working at that time. So I wanted to explore the idea of being at the premiere of the Rite of Spring, but from a Cubist perspective. So um, with the approach of Cubism being that if you take an image and then you look at it from lots of different perspectives, this is one of the techniques that was developed for Cubism. So I was thinking, how do I use that idea of seeing the same thing from different perspectives choreographically? It's trying to sort of yeah, kind of compose something in a way that's quite fragmented, but hopefully feels kind of intriguing about what's going on. Why does the perspective keep shifting on this situation? And have tried to be really musical with it, and it was quite hard to learn. So that's a kind of segment of quote quotable. And uh, then there's this solo cabaret piece that I do to Gertrude Stein's poem. And then there's a piece of Ravel, which is also going, which is more of a solo for Josh. And that's looking at the way sort of people were painting at the time and looking at the marks that were made in the paintings and also thinking about the situation of Gertrude Stein sat for a portrait by Picasso says that this is kind of inverse portraiture that's going on between the two of them and she sat for him over 90 times which I think is quite interesting. Um, so the second piece that I'm presenting at 4x20 is a new piece about the British surrealist artist Leonora Carrington called Cosmic Yogurt. And I'm creating the work in collaboration with the designer Pam Tate, who I've worked with for a number of years, and um, working with a folk musician called Nick Hart, uh, who will be composing the music and actually playing live in the piece. There are going to be three dancers, and they're called Yoz Clark, Bryony Pennington and Oksana Penchenko and they're going to be kind of moving between illustrating moments of Leonora Carrington's life and then illustrating Leonora Carrington's paintings. So I wanted to create a work which both looked at her kind of 2D work but then wove that in with a sort of three-dimensional tapestry of her life and see how those things could come together in a piece of work. The piece at the moment has sort of four different sections and it moves from her being a debutante in London, being uh, presented to King George V in the 1930s. And then she flees to Paris, sort of breaks out of her stuffy kind of wealthy family from up north in England. And then has this wonderful time in Paris living with Max Ernst and then he gets taken away by the Nazis because he's deemed a degenerate artist and she, she goes completely mad at that point and is institutionalized so looking at that period in her life as the sort of third section of the piece and then it comes through to when she moves to Mexico where she lives the rest of her life in Mexico and for the final section of the piece just really drawing on all of the amazing imagery uh, that she created and trying to bring some of those characters and surreal sort of half animals half humans to life um, in the last bit of the piece. So the 4x20 is about an event, it's about a moment, um, and our choreographers are working towards that right now. But the reality is this is just the beginning of a process for them, it's the beginning of their career, and so what I hope that they get out of this is a bit like coming to a camp, if you like, coming to a holistic experience. You know, they spend time in the restaurant, they spend time in the hills, they spend time walking in the landscape, and have something which embeds in their memory in the same way we will embed the memory of their performances that they draw on in their careers and I hope also they meet some fantastic people and that's the joy of having a festival is it's an exchange of ideas and that out of those ideas something really concrete and unexpected happens so I think in the years to come they look back and go oh that happened at that moment that ignition moment and that was here and that'll be a fantastic outcome. Dance has this very ephemeral thing it's totally not object we're surrounded by objects here 
Um, and the one thing we're talking about is the thing you can't take with you, um, which is just the experience. I think they're fundamentally undervalued. I think they're incredible things. We should pay more attention to those times. And I hope that this programme helps bring more people into contact with contemporary dance.